I don't remember if I told you this story before, but when I was a child, my parents would take forever to leave church on Sundays. And by forever, I mean when everyone else had left and was gone, they'd still be talking to one last couple and just chatting away and chatting away, and they would not stop talking. And eventually, I got so tired of waiting around for my parents and waiting around, I ran out of things to do at church. So one Sunday, I went with the couple that lived across the street over to their house and had lunch with them. And then came back after lunch, and my parents were still talking. (laughs) And so I started doing this every Sunday. I'd go over to the neighbor's house and have lunch, come back, my parents are still talking, go over to the neighbor's house and have lunch, come back, and my parents are still talking. Until once, and they went over to my neighbor's house and had lunch, and my parents got done talking early. (laughs) And they had no idea where I was. And they started searching high and low from me, looking all over the place, running around, screaming, yelling, trying to find me, until finally I walked out of the neighbor's house, and there was one of them on the street. And they said, where have you been? (laughs) But they were so (laughs) happy once they settled down (laughs) that they had found me. Jesus says, that's what it's like when you go to someone who has wronged you. And it says, um, if another member, of back one, I'll control it, don't worry. Communication error, just a sec. If another member of the church sins against you, go to the one and point out their fault when the two of you are alone. Oh, I think I skipped one there. There we go. And if he finds it, truly I'm telling you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that had never gone astray. Jesus says that when we go to those who we have had a problem with, it is like searching for a lost child, like a lost sheep. And when we meet those people and we are able to work through and address those problems, the response is great joy, overwhelming celebration. There is more joy in heaven over this one relationship restored than over the 99 relationships that were never broken. Jesus says that's what it means to be part of the church. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the faults of that one while the two of you are alone. We are to seek out those we have a problem with because they are part of this community. They are part of God's family. And not only when we have a problem with them, but also I was recalling this this morning when I was coming here, so it's not in the slides, but when we remember that Someone has a problem with us as well. Jesus says, if you're going up to the altar and you remember that someone has a problem with you to give your offering, leave your offering and go and address the problem that person has with you. Then come back and give your offering. This is part of God's calling to the church. And Jesus says it brings joy, which makes no sense. Because I have to admit, It is so hard to do this thing that Jesus tells us to do. I'd rather avoid or excuse, or you know, you could try, but then it feels like the past, or you're scared and you're embarrassed, or I just don't feel like it, okay? Or they should come to me. Why should I have to go to them? But it's like when Peter asked how many times we are to forgive. How did Jesus respond? 70 times 7. If at first you don't succeed, Jesus says, try, 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 try again. Go to them. Seek to solve the problem. And when you're ready to give up, treat them 
like people who need a doctor. That's how Jesus describes sinners earlier in Matthew's gospel. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I'm not saying that you're going to be an expert emotional surgeon, but that's never stopped the public from making a difference in the lives of those who are sick. There was once a story I heard of a girl who had cancer, and within two weeks, they raised $15,000 to support her medical bills. After that, she continued to receive support and received more and more support. And before she died at age 15, she had set up a nonprofit that in one decade provided $4.5 million in service and support to children with cancer because people gave her that much that she had more to share. That happened not because she was in some type of unique marketing scheme, but because we all give ourselves away to care for those who are in need. If you have a problem with someone that can't be fixed, treat that person like this little girl, Jesus says. Treat them like people whom we'll give our hearts and souls to even if we've never met them. But you may be thinking, yeah, but I don't owe that person anything. Let bygones be bygones. Fortunately, the truth is, Christians can never say, I do not owe you anything. As Paul tells the Romans, owe no one anything except to love one another. We live in love debt. And God's given us an endless supply of that love to share. If you ever feel like you are running out, return to that open embrace, and you'll find more of it than you can imagine. And so I invite you as we return from vacations and summer relaxation and grueling work and come back to worship and faith education this fall, listen to Paul and put on the armor of Christ. Specifically, put on the helmet, which Paul says is the hope of salvation. You know what a helmet is, right? It's that thing that protects your noggin, the one part of the body doctors and surgeons still have no clue how to fix, okay? It's important. Hope, Paul says, is our helmet. Hope is the expression of love that always looks towards what may be, what could be, what's promised, what will be in God's kingdom. Hope is the thing that keeps your eye on God's kingdom, even when there's a part of your mind telling you God's vision is irrational. Hope is the belief that changes how we relate to everyone and allows us to stay in relationships even on those hard days. Hope is the expression of faith that trusts when we seek, we will find. When we look for the lost, they will be brought home. When we seek out those who have wronged us, they will be restored. And when we seek out those whom we have wronged, they will show us love. Hope is the promise built on the knowledge of who God is. Because it is not the will of your Father in heaven that even one of these little ones should be lost. God is the one who has an unshakable hope that every lost sheep will be found, every sick person will be healed, every human can and will know what it means to be loved. You think it's a miracle how we share our hearts and our wallets with those who have cancer that somehow this little girl was able to set up a foundation that did $4.5 million of work in 10 years? Imagine how much God will empty his pockets to buy us a ticket home. But God will trade the most priceless treasure he has to save us from death and sin. God owed us nothing and yet chose to owe us eternal love. So today I invite you 
in the words of St. Paul, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the love that is unshakable. As my shirt says, say, this is me, I am loved. Put on the hope that is eternal. Discover the joy of being found by God and carried home. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like if you heard good news and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest message. Peace be with you.